ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, I bring greetings uh, uh, from the Russian uh, uh, Pushkin, I think, yeah, exhibition center. I have with me a very, very distinguished guest. Uh, before I introduce the distinguished guest, uh, again, I welcome you. This is uh, Brooke Hailubesha. I'm the director and producer of the Diplomatic Corner. Today, I don't have a diplomat for you, uh, but uh, instead, what I have for you is a cosmonaut. Yes, he's a cosmonaut. And he's the first uh, person in my life uh, that I have met as a cosmonaut or an, or a, or a um, people of uh, people who, who travel in this space and the universe. Uh, he is cosmonaut Sergei Kud Sverchkov. Um, uh, um, I'm honored really to 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 have met you, and welcome uh, to Addis Ababa. Welcome to Ethiopia. Thank you. And thank you for agreeing to be interviewed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my show is called um, Diplomatic Corner. Yes. But also youngsters also watch, youngsters, mature people. And space science is, uh, is a new domain, of course. It's, uh, it's, it, 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 it brings a certain degree of curiosity. If you could start you know, sharing uh, uh, to, to our audience you know, about your educational and professional, professional background, I'll be more than uh, thankful. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a uh, uh, former student and of Moscow State Technical University, named after Bauman, and graduated uh, in 2006 uh, with a honor diploma. And uh, later, uh, after university, I uh, uh, spent a few years working as an engineer, rocket space engineer, in uh, rocket space corporation that currently build spacecrafts and uh, uh, modules for space stations. So my profession was uh, to design rocket techniques. Techniques, which you have uh, uh, mastered. And also, I believe, uh, when I reviewed your um, resume and bio, bio data, uh, you had spent years preparing to become a cosmonaut. Am I yes. right? Yeah. To become a cosmonaut, it's not, uh, uh, it's not easy. Uh -huh. Uh, and uh, it takes a long because uh, first you have to be enrolled mm -hmm. as a candidate mm -hmm. uh, for uh, as candidate cosmonaut. Mm -hmm. it, it takes time and uh, I, I've made a few attempts before I uh, was uh, enrolled as a, as a member of uh, cosmonaut office in 2010 and then uh, I spent two years uh, for training to become a professional cosmonaut uh, and then I started my way uh, to space flight then uh, I spent w uh, eight years uh, to be trained as a cosmonaut and fly in space in total I spent 10 years of training uh, to to make my first space flight. It uh, usually takes from five to eight years uh, to perform s uh, first space flight mm -hmm. because uh, during this period you have to pass uh, tens of exams, tests, uh, and uh, show that you're really a uh, real professional, mm -hmm. show your abilities, mm -hmm to work without any faults, uh, without any uh, mistakes in space. But before you have to prove your yeah. qualities and abilities here on Earth. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it takes yeah. so long. Yeah. It's very competitive, I ask you, because thousands of uh, young men and young ladies uh, like you would want to become a cosmonaut at least. Yeah, but uh, a will mm -hmm. to be a cosmonaut uh, it's not enough to be a cosmonaut. Yes. You have to do everything uh, you can do, everything possible mm -hmm. to become a cosmonaut. You have to yeah. have a good uh, yeah. education, have a good health, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, have a really strong will. Mm -hmm. Because every cosmonaut in his career has a lot of uh, obstacles uh, before reach the, the, the space. 
So it's it's not easy, but I can confirm that every cosmonaut and astronaut in in any country has his own way to space, and this way is not is not easy. It's not simple. Very true. Very true. Cosmonaut uh, Sergei. Uh, all of us were once upon a time um, a child, a little boy, a little girl, and we imagine uh, to become a farmer, an engineer, a scientist, and also a cosmonaut. Uh, what, 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 what was your dream as a little boy, if you, if you really share with us? When did you really decide, I want to be a cosmonaut, you know? You, you know, mm. uh, every little boy uh, is dreaming to be a hero. Uh, uh, to make something uh, really heroic mm -hmm. and my I remember when I was a little boy uh, mm -hmm. I was dreaming uh, to be a, a firefighter mm -hmm. or a policeman mm -hmm. a, a person who mm -hmm. uh, uh, who is who is hero of, uh, mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. who save who saves life every day make something outstanding every day because for me uh, uh, firefighters uh, rescuers they are uh, they are really heroes mm -hmm. they rescue their lives every day to uh, mm, to save mm -hmm. others life yeah. and of course uh, every young boy every little boy is dreaming to be a hero now we see that uh, little kids they are dreaming to be a Mm -hmm. you know, heroes of uh, mm, books or yes. uh, comics, mm -hmm. but I have no comics in my childhood, so I was dreaming to be an ordinary firefighter. But <coughs> later, mm -hmm. when I uh, became a student, mm -hmm. I opened uh, a, a world for me, a world of space techniques, and uh, I became an engineer. Engineer is a, a fantastic uh, profession because engineers are building the world that do, does not exist yet. New buildings, new spacecrafts, new cars, new devices. Everything is built by engineers in different demands. And my goal was to build the best spacecrafts. And uh, this is a very... Uh, uh, inspirational work and then uh, uh, when I was a student mm -hmm. these two dreams uh, matched together and to be a hero or and to to mm -hmm. to f fly uh, spacecrafts uh, um, means to be a cosmonaut because cosmonaut is not only a pilot of spacecraft mm -hmm. he is also an engineer he is a scientist and uh, probably to be a cosmonaut is to be a professional in many, many, many mm -hmm. uh, kinds of uh, work. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, 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 this was the moment when I decided to become a cosmonaut. And then mm -hmm. I put all my efforts mm -hmm. to, to become a cosmonaut. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Uh, continuing uh, our discussion. The Soviet Union, the former Soviet Union, uh, the Russian Federation, you know, even here in, in, in Ethiopia, in Africa, mind you. Uh, we grew up uh, when we took science, biology, physics and the like, about a little bit of astronomy, a little bit of um, space. Uh, we, we, we read books and we know by heart, you know, about, uh, you know, Sputnik, about 1959, about Yuri Gagarin, the first, the first man who circled the Earth. And equ equally also, we remember, you know, Apollo, you know, the first landing of the moon by the Americans, you know, uh, all, all these things. Uh, did um, this motivate you uh, as a young boy also? Uh, for, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm from later generations uh, and uh, the space uh, for me was something uh, uh, that we get used to. So it's normal uh, space flights, regular space flights, and uh, I had uh, uh, big uh, pictures of uh, rockets and uh, spacecrafts on my wall in my 
in my room. So it was normal for me. But we can't stay, we cannot stay uh, on the same place all the time and uh, uh, do same things. We have to go forward. And did exactly this thing uh, inspired me to reach uh, something really special, probably to go to moon mm -hmm. or to Mars, because yeah. when, you're, you, when you're young, uh, there is nothing impossible. And this is the key to go forward all the time because one day of the dream become true. Very good. Thank you. You know, um, I always wonder, you know, you are the lucky few. You, a cosmonaut, the Americans, astronauts, you know, and a few other countries, the Chinese are you know, up there now. And it's still a small uh, exclusive club, I would say. You know, uh, we'll talk about Soyuz MS-17 mm -hmm. and the international... Uh, space station after, after uh, that will be my next question but for now you know when you are in space and we, when you look like uh, that beautiful blue planet I didn't see it with my eyes I saw it uh, through the videos that you astronauts and cosmonauts take you know uh, I feel you know soft heart towards that uh, it's just one that in the whole universe yes uh, what do you feel when you look at that when you look also at the problems of the world here you know uh, you know, you've already uh, answered the question because uh, cosmonauts, they have the same feeling when you first time uh, look at the, at the planet, look at Earth from the window yeah. of space station. Uh, this is a wonderful feeling because, uh, for example, I couldn't even uh, uh, breathe breath okay. because... Uh, so wonderful uh, the planet was. And uh, I was thinking that when you uh, observe the Earth, you cannot see any borders. You cannot see uh, people. You cannot see cities. You look and you see the Earth with deserts, forests, uh, rivers, oceans, clouds. But there are almost no... Uh, tracks or signs of human presence and you of course you you see uh, endless uh, space this uh, uh, endless darkness and the only one planet and the only one place where people live uh, the earth in in this uh, floating in this darkness and uh, you can really observe the scale of the mm. vi visual universe because we cannot s see uh, all the universe, but you look around and you understand that the Earth is the only place we live. And we are all humans and inhabitants of uh, the planet. And uh, uh, everything is... Mm, is is I know is common so yeah. uh, humanity uh, human, human yes we we are not we are not uh, yeah. Russians uh, Philippines yes. uh, you know uh, Japanese Japanese or Chinese. We, we all we are humans. human beings yeah. we're, we're all human we are, beings we only have one home you know yes literally. and then you mm. see the scale mm. the dimension of yeah. the universe yeah. uh, of yeah. the space mm. and you understand that all the problems. Mm -hmm all the tensions are mm. uh, become insignificant or insigni yes yeah. they are mm. so small they seem mm. insignificant so yeah. Yeah. yeah in wow. front of this endless endless space yeah yes. yeah we are still discovering newer and newer suns stars galaxies you know, continuously yes we do it dist distantly with telescopes yeah. observing but Probably we will uh, we won't be able to reach yeah. other star systems or other planets uh, in next mm -hmm. decades uh, or hundred years. But humans are really curious. They want to know what's there, what's what's happening there, yeah. and uh, this is this is uh, this things uh, uh, pushes humanity forward. Very true. 
Yeah, I mean, this, uh, human beings are so, we are so curious, more I mean, determined to know more. You know, the knowledge and the opportunity is really there. Now, my next question will, will uh, please, I'm going to ask you is about, you have been in space for, um, from, uh, from October to April, I think six months. Yes. You were part of the, of the crew uh, uh, of the International Space Station mm -hmm. uh, that uh, Russia is known for and that is shared with other countries. And uh, you served with uh, Japanese uh, as well as American uh, cosmonauts. How, how, was, uh, how was life? How was life uh, what was your daily routine, for example? Let's start with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, the international crew of space station uh, works according uh, to the schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, every day is scheduled by ground uh, teams. And we are supported by ground teams and ground specialists. There, there are few mission control centers mm -hmm. in the uh, United States, in uh, Japan, in Moscow, in, um, in Germany, and they support our work uh, up there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they start uh, with the morning routine. Okay. You, you know, uh, you brush your teeth. Yeah. You have breakfast, and then uh, you check uh, the station, mm -hmm. and then you report that everything okay. We can we can go. We can, we, uh, we can start the the, the work, mm -hmm. uh, the schedule, and then we start doing experiments, mm -hmm. because the main uh, goal, the main mission of uh, space station is uh, to perform experiments that we are not able to do here on Earth because there, are, uh, there is a very specific uh, environment, whalelessness and uh, space environment when we work above the atmosphere. You know, radiation, vacuum, all these uh, conditions are very specific and we can uh, make very uh, specific uh, experiments there. Yeah, to, uh, we work for scientists on Earth because unfortunately we cannot send uh, all the scientists and, uh, to space. Yes, true. So we are eyes and hands of uh, uh, scientists who work on Earth in, uh, in around the world. Wow. And we do experiments, we are taught, we are trained to do experiments. This is why the training for the space flight takes a long time, because we uh, have to do uh, we have to know how to do a lot of things, medical experiments, technical experiments. So the whole day is scheduled and very and planned. We have uh, uh, we have time for uh, for the rest, but it's not a long it's not a long so time. So you, you after doing work becomes primary, of course. Yes, That's your yes. Job. We we after have some that, time. We have some time to socialize among your, among yourselves. Yes, of course, we can uh, chat, we can spend uh, time together during, during the, the dinner, okay. uh, discuss some news, mm -hmm. and discuss the next day schedule. So it's, uh, it's, mm, day or it's a day of and work of real expedition that mm -hmm. uh, works really far from the rest of people, like Antarctic expeditions or... Others, very uh, in expeditions in distant places, hard to reach uh, places. Then uh, we sleep, yeah. and then repeat. We yeah. do next uh, day job, next day work. You have your own private quarter, yeah. Uh, yes, we have every every uh, crew member have uh, crew quarter. Yes, uh, a small room uh, that. Uh, looks like mm, looks like a, a part of wardrobe. Oh. Yeah, because it's really small. So small you you need on, you need yeah, space, space to 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 sleep and nothing more. Yeah. Yes. So this is uh, the this is how they every day pass yeah. experiments experiments. Uh, uh, Sometimes we do space walks. We work outside space station, and uh, it's very interesting, uh, dangerous, and uh, in 
um, uh, special, outstanding work outside mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that uh, demanding, I would say. Mm -hmm. But every every cosmonaut and astronaut mm -hmm. uh, do it with, uh, you know, with I can't say with pleasure, <laughs> but <laughs> will, duty, willingly. Duty bound and willingly. Yeah, yeah, willingly, yes. Okay, great. Wonderful. So that's, that's your daily routine. And this yeah. daily routine, you know, I mean, every day it's repeated, yeah? Yes, it's scheduled and yeah. uh, uh, the mm. um, specifics of uh, the world, of the work of cosmonaut of this job is that you are the person who must perform the task exactly on time and start and finish exactly on time uh, to perform 100% of the task and do it from the first try. Uh, this is all you need to do. Do the thing you ask to do and do it perfectly. Nothing more. Wow. That's expected. That's yes. expected, yes. yes. So one week passes, second, third week, the first month, and then uh, you start, uh, would I be correct to say, you start missing home. Missing home means Mother Earth and your family and friends. Is that the case? Uh, Mm, no, six months is the normal duration of expedition, and uh, of course uh, we m were missing families. But uh, for many cosmonauts, work and mission is the main um, priority. Yes, because uh, a lot of people are relying uh, on you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody can do this mm. job yeah. but you. And uh, uh, the other thing that uh, modern uh, uh, technologies, mm -hmm. these day technologies, allow us to communicate with family wow. uh, every day. We have um, internet on board, Very so we use uh, email, IP phone. Instantly, like always. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. mm Hmm? <laughs> or is you, there a, you need, a delay? Maybe I don't know. Nah, uh, uh. you you can use it. You mm -hmm. can use it every day mm -hmm. if you have time. Yes. And yes. if the schedule allows, allows you to you. do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But we have no technical restrictions uh, to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not. Probably it's not every day, mm -hmm. but regularly oh. on demand. Wonderful, wonderful. Sleep all becomes uh, an issue, I think, in a gravity-free atmosphere. <laughs> Uh, how does uh, your uh, yours and your uh, colleagues, you know, sleep adjustment? Is it very difficult or is it smooth when you transition? Uh, how, what's your sleep pattern? Uh, you know, uh, the human body, a uh, human mm. being, uh, mm. is mm. can get used to everything. Yes, so it it takes few days. Mm to get used to new conditions, mm -hmm. new environment. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's not. Uh, Mm, it, it, mm -hmm. This is new feeling when you start mm -hmm. sleeping, fall sleeping uh, mm -hmm. in uh, weightlessness. Uh -huh. so you don't feel any pillow, you don't feel <laughs> any uh, uh. Um, uh, blanket. Yes. yes. Okay. You yeah. floating inside the sleeping bag. You, you can't sleep in any, in, in any position you in want. In any position. In you way. don't feel yeah. the weight of your head. Uh -huh. So, and. Yeah. Uh, mm. uh, I found that it's mm. it's not comfortable to mm. uh, to sleep first days because mm -hmm. you must have mm. uh, support for yes. your head mm -hmm. and you don't have any yeah. feeling of touching your yeah. Yeah. your your no, head so uh -huh. you you don't feel mm. feelings that you yeah. got used to so yeah. you cannot sleep wow first wow. days Definitely. but then you sleep as you as you sleep on earth Wonderful. Do you, do you get yourself tied up so that you don't uh, rock around in the space? Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. there are a few mm. reasons we mm. have to sleep in mm. uh, sleeping bag that mm. uh, attached to the wall okay. inside your crew quarter because first uh, first thing is the safety. Mm -hmm. You have to be fixed uh, on the same place to avoid floating around the, the station because it's not safe. Mm -hmm. And the second uh, that you have to, you, you need a regular ventilation in front of your face to have fresh air 
uh, because in weightlessness, uh, air can, can be moved only uh, artificially with the fans. There is no con convection like, like here on Earth. So to avoid uh, any effects uh, connected with CO2, we have to uh, point the fan towards face to get fresh air even when we sleep. Every, every, uh, everything is, uh, the station, the crew quarter is built to provide uh, all the safety conditions to sleep. Wow. So it's, not, it's not just a, a crew quarter, but it's very smart crew quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for really uh, giving us a picture of uh, how it is. We can fantasize and imagine, you know, more or less, you know, what you mean for our audience and I myself as well. Thank you for sharing that. Um, before I move to the next question, how about dreaming? This might sound a silly question, but I think it's an important question, I feel, you know, we are humans, we dream when we, when we sleep. Is there any dream, dream variations, things like that? Uh, you know, uh, mm. dreams are, yeah. mm, they are the same dreams as on Earth. Okay. But uh, we are dreaming about the day past. Mm -hmm. some, we, we get some emotions from the day and uh -huh. keep them in our okay. head. And we, some dreams about mm. the, the bright emotions that we mm. uh, met, you know. In the, the day, the day, day, daytime, but uh, I know I'm not. I uh, noted that emotions mm -hmm. during the dream are brighter because we don't have uh, so many emotions. We don't have bright emotions uh, uh, during the daytime during the flight because uh, here on Earth we ha we communicating with people. We change environment. Yes inside outside we feel uh, a lot of things uh, uh, different temperature different uh, air motion light but inside the space station light is the same air motion is the same temperature is always the same you communicate with the same people so the how to say the um, Range of emotion is smaller than on Earth. Range, ra 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 uh, range of feelings, feelings. Are, are smaller than on Earth. So our mind is compensating it during wow. this the sleep. Uh, dreams are brighter, and emotions are stronger I when you sleep. There, but when we come back, uh, everything become nominal. Your routine, yeah. Yes. yeah. Great. How many days did it take you to adjust, you know, after six months with weightless, weightlessness and the like? In how many days would you be able to, to get your mobility, uh, to, to walk steadily and as, as, as we do now, you know? He, uh, uh, we are separate, mm -hmm. we uh, different periods. Mm -hmm. The first period, uh, um, uh, like, uh, let's call it intense uh, <coughs> a period when, when uh, we just arrived. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, mm, the duration of this period is a uh, few days. It, and when we start uh, remembering, learning how to walk, how yeah. to walk straight. Yes. <laughs> Balance, and yeah. Uh, uh. yeah, our body uh, yeah. have to get used to mm. new environment, yeah. gravity. Wow! Because w we uh, forgot how how to mm. balance. We forgot how to walk, and we let's say uh, starting over. Yeah, again. Yeah, again. Again. Yes. And the, this the because uh, we should physically. Mm. Um, get used to it. We, we physically changing during space flight, and we have to change our body mm -hmm. for the new environment. Yeah. It takes time, few days, and then uh, step by step we uh, uh, bring 
the, the mental conditions and the physical conditions to the previous state. Yeah. It takes uh, up to six months. Wow. Wow. The complete uh, uh, rehabilitation mm -hmm. uh, can, can take uh, up to six months. But wow. usually uh, it uh, um, finishes earlier. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. My next question will be, now you are in, you are in Ethiopia, we are honored to have you. And yes, I'm, I'm sure hundreds of kids who are excited about space. We, are, if we even have the Ethiopian space satellite, you know, society, things like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, and uh, I'm sure you have met some, fo some folks, some, some people. What brought you to Ethiopia? Uh, the, what's the nature of your trip here? Uh, I'm a member of the delegation uh, of Association of Economical Partnership, uh, Africa, Russia, Africa. And uh, our goal was uh, to bring uh, distinguished uh, uh, media specialists and, uh, you know, a cosmonaut. <laughs> and I'm a just a member of yeah, like the... An, like an ambassador. Thing. Yeah, yes. Oh. And uh, the goal was, uh, goal was to share our professional experience in uh, the matter of uh, media, mass media, and uh, space uh, technologies shared with the specialists in Ethiopia. And uh, uh, this, that was the main uh, goal of our visit. Whom did you, uh, whom did you meet so far? Uh, <laughs> the only one uh, meeting was uh, with uh, uh, kids today and the main event is, uh, will be tomorrow in the, in the university okay. uh, uh, where I'm going to tell about uh, Roscosmos mm. Uh, technologies mm -hmm. and uh, personal mm -hmm. uh, experience of space wide. Wow, wow, wow. Ho hope you'll have a great stay in, in, in Ethiopia. Um, you know, uh, space industry itself is very expensive in the world, you know. Uh, dreams are dreams, whether you are a poor country or a rich country. And as Africans, people think, Middle Eastern countries aspire, you know, to, to have something up there, you know to try it at least. Uh, so, uh, you know, <clears throat> um, I, as, a, as a professor of political science, uh, in politics you say, we say you know, either we, we work together and save money, like the International Space uh, Station, uh, together, uh, you know, we, for a common goal, you know, we work for science, for humanity, we work together and save money and y use it continuously. That's one, 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 one approach. The other approach is, to go it along and uh, to spend billions and billions and billions of dollars, you know. <coughs> so, uh, giving the, 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 giving this this uh, reality, uh, I would say from my readings, the International Space Station uh, is successful. Uh, do you have any comments on that? Yes, it's uh, uh, more than successful. Uh, International Space Station is the unique uh, project that have never been uh, created before and uh, uh, mm, you know I'm really inspired by this project I uh, honor it to be a member of uh, this uh, big international project and uh, the, our experience experience shows that uh, as you mentioned uh, uh, work uh, together is uh, really efficient than work alone. So this is this is how we work. Well, thank you, thank you for uh, for being to the point. Uh, so when we talk about space, it's the unknown. My generation, by the way, growing up in the 1970s, I'm sure you know all about uh, Star Trek. You know, <laughs> Captain Kirk. You know. You know yes, I'm uh, not. I'm not a fan of Star Trek, but I because I, you are I, the wear, I wear. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, that was our outlet at the time. Really, it's just the fantasy, the idea itself. And more or less, you know, you know, it, it, it's happening, you know, some of it, if not all, you know. Uh, going through space, the speed of the light, you know, it's just incredible. And some of it is coming a reality. So space is the unknown. Uh, and we are still aspiring. 
we started with the moon and now we, we are planning to go to the Mars you know, within our own solar system and we still aspire to go out of our solar system. Uh, um, if you don't want to answer this question, please don't. But uh, do you think there is life in uh, other solar systems, other stars in the universe? <laughs> uh, I wish I knew, yes. but uh, we cannot stop our mind uh, uh, looking for our for other civilizations, yeah. our science of uh, life, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we we will we will continue searching for life on other planets or uh, another planet uh, mm -hmm. systems. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we can we didn't find anything so far, mm -hmm. uh, as I know. But we, we will continue. Cause this this is a, a idea. This is a dream. So we, yeah. as humanity, we won't stop until we find something. Absolutely, the curiosity yes. itself. Absolutely. Be because yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. if we are here, mm. if mm. the humanity exists, mm. so why other civilization yeah. Yeah. can exist somewhere else? True. Uh, this true. is a, this is kind of philosophical questions, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. question, but uh, mm -hmm. why not? Yeah, why not? It's going to be discovered soon, of course. Yeah, why uh, not? Let's see. <laughs> let's see. Let's wait and see. Cross our fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I remember, you know, <coughs> to wrap up on this point, you know, um, America is also, you know, American uh, space industry uh, is very, very, you know, active, hyperactive. It's not now, maybe less, less now in the last 20, 15 years, but before that, you know, the Apollo missions, you know, my God, so many of them, even the failure. You know, when the, the first uh, uh, astronauts died, you know, all three of them, you know, that was the first tragedy. And all these things, you know. And uh, what really hits me is, uh, you know, uh, cosmonaut Sergei, what really hits me is one of them was the pioneer, I believe. It was sent out of our uh, solar system with a, a voice recorded with a man and a woman, naked, of course. Uh, peace to be to you, whoever finds this, you know, mm -hmm. like a, a message with a voice, uh, the animals, the, how humans look and the like. And that becomes really, really touching because it's going timeless. It's really continuously going, you know. Where it will end, we don't know. No, I, I have no idea uh, because I, I know about the, the missions, mm. but it's still uh, going f yes. further yeah, from us, further, further. From us, yeah. Yes, and... Uh, uh, the the people who send it, uh, they they hope that somebody. some somebody some creature. yeah some creature can find and uh, uh, understand what what we are where we are, yes. but yeah. you know uh, space distances mm. uh, the distances that we operate mm. billions of kilometers mm. are really yeah. tiny in scale of the university and we um, we didn't we we don't know if there is any 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 uh, anything that can find it soon it just was a gesture of hope send something yeah. hoping that uh, somebody, somebody will answer, will, will answer. Will answer. Yes. Yeah. yeah thank you thank you now let me let's come to ethiopia you know uh, dreams are dreams, as I said earlier, whether countries are poor or, or rich. And uh, <coughs> uh, when we focus on the beauty and, 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 and the, the, the benefits of space technology, what you are doing up there in space is fantastic for pharmaceuticals, for discovery of some discoveries, inventions of so many things in a free gravity kind, uh, kind of situation. And uh, for countries like Ethiopia, African nations, down to earth, you know, from space, uh, with uh, now it has become affordable that you could, uh, you know, look from there, look for, you know, mineral prospecting, look for water resources. Uh, it's good uh, application for you know, um, planning for so many things. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, uh, I think, the benefits of, of it in changing real life as, as it is now, uh, short of dreaming going, uh, going abroad. So, uh, any comments on that? Well, how can Ethiopia benefit? from space technology, what do you think? 
we have all these benefits uh, now uh, because uh, um, Russia, for example, uh, has uh, uh, space observation date, data and uh, uh, many, of, uh, many of it can be bought and used, used uh, by uh, customers and this is a market of space technologies. And moreover, we use uh, the space technologies every day. Every has a smartphone with a uh, navigation system inside yeah. that uh, get the system inside the device that have uh, navigation data from satellite that can show you where, where you are exactly. exactly yeah. Yes, and space uh, images and maps Everything is created uh, with space technologies, use space, using space images, space uh, satellites, and uh, now this is our daily life, space technologies, but we want to improve this life, so it's not necessary to uh, create your own uh, satellites, uh, uh, very, uh, you know, very ex uh, expensive, expensive, uh, and uh, uh, you can use uh, you can data, data, data from that, other satellites. Fr um, America sells data, and, and yeah, assume now, Roscosmos sells now, data. Now, now also, I assume now you know, yeah, and the data, Roscosmos they yeah. sell frames even. That's called frames, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you can you you can use data. You can use not only raw data, but mm -hmm. processed data that can show you. Uh, the resources to show you the state of the earth surface uh, that's uh, that's the ma main uh, 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 advantages we can share data and uh, and developing countries can benefit yeah. out of yes. it mean. yeah and uh, <coughs> moreover mm -hmm. uh, 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 countries like Russia can uh, provide, can build a spe very specific satellite mm -hmm. if uh, you need it. So, weather satellites, small ones, it is. Yeah, yeah, small, small satellites, yeah. even mm -hmm. uh, university satellite, mm -hmm. because this is the way uh, mm -hmm. to change mm -hmm. uh, way of thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, Space technologies is not a technology that we mm -hmm. use, mm -hmm. this is technology that can. Mm -hmm. uh, make they can make a revolution in thinking because you think wider you think deeper yeah. and uh, you understand that your uh, field of vision is not only your uh, street your city your scale of vision includes the planet and universe and you believe that you can do this and young students uh, uh, often are inspired by space technologies because they can uh, they believe they can do everything in the scale of the planet and this is very important because uh, it's like raise your eyes upon the sky and understand that uh, something that few years ago can be uh, impossible now is possible so, uh, first satellites, first human in space, uh, were not uh, just achievements. They changed mind uh, around the Earth. This is a new, new horizon that we are, uh, uh, reached, and then it, this this means that we, uh, thanks to these technologies, we can go further. And for developing countries. Uh, pu uh, putting this yeah. thing, uh, thing inside the brain of young specialists and young students can be um, mm, the thing that can change the country. Uh, and yeah. yes, yeah, very true. Sure, sure. Thank you. We are uh, slowly coming to our uh, uh, to end our um, um, discussion interview with you. And uh, one question that it, it popped into my mind is, uh, while you were there, uh, up there, any worries about uh, space uh, debris? Because we are having more and more debris, you know. The lifespan of a satellite used to be five years, seven years, three decades ago, but now 10, 11 years maybe. But still the debris is going around, you know. 
any collusion, any worry about that? How can we manage it even as human beings, you know, in a collaborative way, you know? Uh, we uh, have been known about space debris for a long time. Yeah. And, uh, of course, we are monitoring uh, all the parts of space techniques mm -hmm. and space. Mm -hmm. And we have catalogs and we know all the trajectories and we can predict that trajectories. So, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, speaking about International Space Station, we know in advance if something is dangerous for a space station we can do the maneuver mm -hmm. we can change the trajectory to avoid collision I see. but we uh, this is the, the very uh, you know actual problem mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now we know that if you send satellite yeah. you have to remove it later from the orbit yeah. Yeah. so we uh, we have to think about problem before we create it. Okay. This is how we do now, and but we still have a lot of satellites uh, on orbit, and uh, now uh, um, specialists around the world mm. are thinking mm. uh, about this problem, mm. trying to find the solution. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is a new challenge, yeah. yes. as, uh, and a very interesting challenge. Yeah. And I think, I, be, I believe we will yeah. find the solution. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm smiling, it just came into my head that, you know, if we, let's say, push it and l let it go, you know, out of our Earth orbits to, the, to space, then it will be like littering, like it's like pollution, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, it's not good, you know, really. Yes. And it's, it's not right, it's not, ethically it's not proper, am I right, you know? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, yes, you're right. Yeah. That's, uh, but some, sat for example, some satellites yeah. or uh, mm -hmm. university satellites, mm -hmm. they're orbiting on the low Earth orbit. Low level, okay. So, yeah. uh, uh, so after months mm -hmm. or years of mm -hmm. orbiting, they enter the atmosphere and they burn. So okay. nothing remains they burn. on the okay. er er mm -hmm. low Earth atmosphere. Okay. And the uh, space debris is the uh, the question for higher orbits, but still it exists. It probably it's uh, uh, the question is the challenge for current generation and future generation. Mm -hmm. It's a new challenge, and we have to find a solution. You go there, capture it, and bring it here, back probably, here. And I, I remember reading such kinds of an idea way back, you know. Yeah. Probably, probably yeah. some of uh, mm. the some of uh, the mm. students uh, of uh, Addis Ababa In University Ethiopia, sure. will find the <laughs> solution. It's, yeah. it's possible, yeah. but first you you should uh, mm. Uh, mm. Um, say uh, mm. you first first you should uh, describe the problem and then yes. try to find the solution, solution. Yeah. Yes. and then. Uh, Somebody will find it for sure. Absolutely, the human uh, creativity, the human brain is is just fantastic. You know, solving so many problems already. You know, in in the in the world, really. Thank you. My last question will be, uh, of course, any plans uh, that you'll go back uh, uh, back uh, to your uh, I would say second home to space anytime soon? Are you planning to go back, uh, cosmonaut uh, Sergey? We we have we have a uh, line because I'm not the only one cosmonaut uh -huh. and we have a line uh, and every uh, cosmonaut uh, go to space according to his his position so uh, I believe uh, our the, the flight of our crew uh, will happen in 2025 but you know life is life yes. and we never uh, say that something is going to happen for sure but we should uh, do everything possible and then we plan we plan yeah. yet we plan we do and then mm. we we see very wise words yes absolutely very wise words by the way you are a, a, a young cosmonaut really you have so many decades uh, ahead of you i think and uh, <laughs> and one the one last question would be uh, let me give you an opportunity now um, you know, um, to address, uh, to say hello, uh, you know, to have a message uh, to the Ethiopian public, uh, especially the young, especially those who are 
you know, I wouldn't say crazy, but who are really into space science and everything. If you care to say, uh, you know, some words of wisdom, encouragement, motivation for the young, especially, uh, I will be very thankful. Uh, uh, I would say nothing happens for for no reason, and to reach uh, your goal, you have to work hard. This is the one way to reach space is to work hard and believe in yourself. Probably this is the, the only advice I can give. And uh, be curious, uh -huh. care about your health, yes, yes, care yes. about your brain, yeah. uh, uh, study h as hard as you can, and, and be ready for any opportunity to use it, and then use it. Great. True. True. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, really. Thank you for your, for, for your time. Cosmonaut Sergei, um, I wish you, uh, in, on behalf of all the viewers that watch us, uh, we are also on satellite as far as America and uh, the Middle East and in European countries, not only in, uh, in Ethiopia, the Ethiopian diaspora as well. Uh, I wish you luck uh, in, in whatever you do, success in your career, long life uh, to you and to your family as well. So, so, I, so I take leave of you. My pleasure. My pleasure. And thank you for accepting uh, my humble request uh, to interview you. To you and the colleagues who are here. Appreciate it. Spasiva. That's the few words I know about Russian words. Spasiva, <laughs> yes. But I need to learn. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you have uh, listened to our quite interesting and lively uh, interview uh, about space, space science, about a career of a, of a young man, of a young boy who grew up and uh, who beat all odds, who competed and became the, f the cream of the cream uh, of the selected, of the cosmonaut family, I would say. Uh, it was my honor to interview cosmonaut Sergei Kud uh, Sverchkov. Uh, I, had, uh, I was delighted to have him. I do hope uh, that you have enjoyed our conversation. And we do hope that he comes back to Ethiopia again, he and other colleagues. And uh, I take leave of you. It's me, uh, uh, Professor Brook Hailubesha, uh, from the premises of the Pushkin Cultural Center. At the heart of it, uh, Addis Ababa, we call it Piazza, this area, Piazza. Uh, I take leave of you, it's me, Brook, uh, from Nahu Television, uh, Diplomatic Corner, until I bring uh, next week uh, uh, another high level diplomat or a cosmonaut. I don't think so in one week, but anyhow, uh, I, I please continue watching us and I wish you all the best to, to all our dear, dear uh, watchers, to our audience. Thank you and I'll see you soon. Au revoir.